Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Friday Ramblings. I am your host, Bardic One, and we're about to discuss a character that's seen a few permutations, adaptations, and is quite a literary icon. We are going to break down everything that is Dr. Doolittle. Dr. John Doolittle is the central character of a series of children's books by Hugh Lofting, starting with the 1920 the story of Dr. Doolittle. The character of John Doolittle is a physician who shuns human patients in favor of animals with whom he can speak in their own languages. In later books, he becomes a naturalist using his abilities to speak with animals to better understand nature and the history of the world. The idea of Dr. Doolittle first appeared in the author's illustrated letters to his children written from the trenches during World War I, when actual news was either too horrible or too dull. That is the nature of war. Either nothing is happening or what is happening is god-awful. Stories are set in early Victorian England where Dr. John Doolittle lives in the fictional English village of Puddleby on the Marsh in the West Country. Now, Dr. Doolittle does have a few close human friends including Matthew Mugg and Tommy Stubbins. The regularly occurring team of animals that helps him out is... Polynesia, the parrot, Gub Gub the pig, Jip the dog, Dab Dab the duck, Chi Chi the monkey, Choo Choo the owl, and a white mouse later simply referred to as Whitey. As far as the stories written by Hugh Lofting, they go as follows. The original is its full title, The Story of Dr. Doolittle Being the History of His Peculiar Life at Home and Astonishing Adventures in Foreign Parts Never Printed in 1920. Later, we would have Voyages of Dr. Doolittle in 1922, Dr. Doolittle's Post Office in 1923, Dr. Doolittle's Circus in 1924, Dr. Doolittle Meets a Londoner in Paris in 1925, Dr. Doolittle's Zoo in 1925 as well, Dr. Doolittle's Caravan in 26, Dr. Doolittle's Garden in 27, Dr. Doolittle in the Moon in 28, Dr. Doolittle's Return in 33, Dr. Doolittle in the Secret Lake which was copyrighted in 1923 but not published until 1948 after Lofting's death in 47, along with Dr. Doolittle and the Green Canary in 50 and Dr. Doolittle's Puddleby Adventures in 52, finishing off Lofting's writings. For the main series, there was two spin-offs, Gub Gub's book and Encyclopedia of Food, written by the pig himself, Gub Gub, and... Dr. Doolittle's birthday book, which is a little day book illustrated with pictures and quotations from the earlier stories. Good times, good times. The main events of the books occur from 1819 all the way up through 1948. And do not, and the chronological order of the stories do not follow the publishing order. Chronological stories are kind of bounce around as the original story of Dr. Doolittle covers several years, but basically starts with the story of Dr. Doolittle, at least select stories, then is Circus, Caravan, Green Canary, Meets a Londoner in Paris which was actually part of a separate anthology, as it is a single short story, Post Office, The Voyages, Doolittle Zoo, Doolittle's Garden, Doolittle and Moon, Doolittle's Return, and Doolittle and the Secret Lake being the last one chronologically. There have been many adaptations of the Dark Doolittle stories in other media, which is where things really get fun. A German film in 1928, Dr. Doolittle and His Animals. A Dr. Doolittle animated series that ran from 70 to 72, produced by Pate Freling Enterprises for 20th Century Fox Television. A U.S. Japan co production, The Voyages of Dr. Doolittle. A direct video animated film in 2011 called The Voyages of Young Dr. Doolittle 
featuring the voices of Jane Seymour, Jason Alexander, and Tim Curry. In 33, an NBC radio series, and from 1995 through 2001, a series of BBC audiobooks read by Alan Bennett. 1973 saw the first stage adaptation, this one by the Philadelphia Boys Choir, which was used during their concert tour to Belgium and Kenya. 1998, stage musical by Leslie Bercuse. And a 2007 stage adaptation by Theatre Works USA, written by Randy Quartz and Mark St. Germain. A 2006 PS2 video game. A 1967 film but starring Rex Harrison. A 2020 live ad action adaptation starring Robert Downey Jr., Michael Sheen, and Antonio Banderas, simply called Doolittle. And the one most people, at least in my very my general age range, know, and that is the franchise that began in 1998, originally starring Eddie Murphy in, the, in Dr. Doolittle and its 2001 sequel, Dr. Doolittle 2, where John Doolittle has a full family, including two daughters who eventually who inherit his gift of talking to the animals. And the youngest daughter of which would take over the helm for the three direct to video sequels, Dr. Doolittle 3, Dr. Doolittle Tale to the Chief, and Dr. Doolittle Million Dollar Mutts. The daughter was played by Kyla Pratt. And Norm MacDonald appears in each film as the voice of their dog, Lucky. The Eddie Murphy films, of course, had some of the most adaptation element as they took place in modern time. And the first film initially portrays John Doolittle as having spent most of his life ignoring to the point of forgetting he had his gift of talking to the animals until an encounter with Lucky triggers the gift and he has to come to terms both with the fact that this not only changes his perception of the world and animals in it, but makes John Doolittle have to come to terms with the fact that he is a strange and unusual person himself and how this impacts his career as a doctor. The later films, as I said, Eddie Murphy would only appear in the second one, which is the only other one to go to theatrical release, where he is much more comfortable in his role, but now faces new and more challenging cases as he treats various animals in a similar manner that he would human patients. And the later three movies focusing on his daughter Maya and her ascension to being not only a veterinarian, but eventually a celebrated, somewhat famous veterinarian. It was stated in an interview by Eddie Murphy that the reason he did not appear in the sequels is that with the aging up of the daughter and Eddie Murphy himself felt that the dynamics had changed and he was not comfortable with his style of comedy and trying to mingle that with being the father of a grown-up daughter, Daughter Doodle 3 taking place as she is entering college. And to be fair, it is kind of a weird thing. I mean, you don't put Eddie Murphy in a movie where he is the biggest name in the movie unless you want the majority of the focus to be on Eddie Murphy, but why would the majority of the focus of the movie be on Eddie Murphy and his relationship to his daughter when his daughter's grown up? That would get you in this weird place where it's like, okay, is he like this clingy dad who won't let his daughter go? Which makes the character kind of weird, and we're not sure if we want to root for him, because, I mean, we all kind of remember when we were heading off to college and we wanted our parents to let us go 
Or do you subvert Ioannis' expectations and basically waste Eddie Murphy's salary by not focusing the movies on him and just having him there as a vague supporting character? Well, then again, you're in that position of wasting a great comedian. And as I said, his salary. It makes sense, and I respect Eddie for realizing it's better off not to open that can of worms because... There really is no winning scenario in that case. Otherwise, they would have had to pretend that barely any time is passing between the various movies, and that would result in the recasting of the children with different actresses, and you get into that whole can of worms. Woo! Yeah, so, it's the thing. What does this mean for the character? Well, it means that no matter how you like to do little, you can find a version of them. You want the most modern effects and a version that tries its best to kind of skew to the uh, original stories, but with that modern sensibility? Well, you have Doolittle with Robert Downey Jr. You want some good old-fashioned uh, late 90s, early 2000s comedy with an established, proven comic leading the ground? Go with Eddie Murphy movies. You like some animation? Mm, pick a decade. we got a few different ones to choose from. You want to just want to read the original material? Read the original material. Hugh Lofting. Look it up. I'm sure there's some great compilations that have been put out over the years. People love a good omnibus. But what about the nature of the character in and of itself? Well, let's be honest. It's a great idea for a character. A scientist, specifically a medical doctor, who can talk to animals, and those animals display some level of human intelligence. Hey, that's the kind of thing that has driven fiction since fiction existed. As it was said, his, his ability to speak to the animals and his relationships with them would eventually lead him to abandon being an active practicing doctor altogether and be a naturalist more focused on studying the world as it is and the history of the world, not just humanity. This is an idea that will never go away. I have a feeling that Throughout the 21st century, we will see Doolittle rise up again in one form or another. Sometimes he'll be English, sometimes he'll be American. Heck, somebody may make a version where he's Asian, we don't know. Maybe of Latin descent. We've even had Doolittle sequels about the daughter. We could even skew John Doolittle and do maybe Joanne Doolittle. Ooh, that'd be a fun way to mess with the timelines to say it's a, a multi generational descendant. What if everybody in the family carries the gift? So many intriguing plot elements, but it all comes down to the same thing. We all want to be able to talk to our animal friends, we all wish we could understand them better and thus understand ourselves and our place in the natural world better. I know we all love the internet. I know we all love this, with the videos, and the sitting in our comfortable houses with our air conditioner and our heat and our pre-made food. So all we have to do is open the package, maybe heat them up in our microwaves. But there's going to be a part of us that is always going to yearn for nature. We keep pets. Well, most of us keep pets. You know, some people are on that whole, you know, oh, keeping pets is, you know, a negative thing for the animal and we should respect the animals, but... You know, that's, that's fine if that's you, because you're still showing you care about animals. You're still showing an empathy to animals in your own way, 
and that's awesome because that brings us back to that point we can veer too far from nature we are from nature we have that primal spirit in us and that primal spirit will always be exemplified by any and all variants of John Doolittle and thus his story will always fascinate us we want to be connected to nature no matter how much we disconnect ourselves from it eventually even the most tech loving of us even the most try not to leave our house of us will want to walk across the grass stroll along a beach immerse ourselves in the waters of your local pond, lake, or maybe even the ocean. And you'll come across an animal if you do that long enough. And those animals, they've got a way of looking at the world that you don't. Your cat does not care about your iPhone. Your dog is not concerned how much battery is left in your Android tablet. And your pet bird No cares at all for your ranking on the online leaderboards in the newest video game. Because after all, all those lovely colorful fish swimming in that tank, they're not going to need your virtual reality or your augmented reality they have primal reality and John Doolittle will always be here to remind us never to let that link break because when you do you lose a little part of yourself check out any version of any of this you want to but remember when you come back in seven days I'm going to have a new Friday rambling for you you don't want to miss a single one of them because you never know what I'm going to do, but it's going to be entertainment, and it's going to be done with a sense of enjoyment. We have already knocked off over 200 episodes, and we are always looking to reach another big goal. So make sure you're with us because I'm always going to be here, and if you watch a video, I'm going to appreciate it. If you comment on it, I'm going to be happy to read it and respond. And if you subscribe, I'm going to like you even more. Hit me up on social media if you got requests. I got the Twitters. You can find me there. I will be happy to discuss the request with you. If it's something I haven't reviewed yet, I can look into it. But remember... As I said before, these reviews are always about what entertains you, what makes you happy, and therefore, we will not bring the negativity. We will not bring the hate. We do not rant. We ramble. And we do it every Friday. That's why it's the Friday Ramblings. I'm the Bardic One. And I will see you. And it's still to end. Don't just stay happy. Stay healthy because I care whether you're an animal or a human. Bye-bye.